Hello there. In this video, we're going to give a brief introduction to the Riemann zeta function. If you have read any serious papers, especially if it's related to, say, number theory, prime number distributions, or several other applications, you may have already come across or maybe even heard of the Riemann zeta function. So in this video, we're just going to go through some basic properties associated with it. Uh, but let's just quickly state the definition. So zeta of x is defined to be equal to the infinite sum from k is equal to 1 to infinity of 1 divided by x k to the x power. So this is the Riemann zeta function, and we're going to talk about some properties of it in this video. To begin, let us briefly start off by figuring out what values of x is the Riemann zeta function defined to be equal to. So let's look at a p-series test because that's pretty much what this uh, is related to. So by the p-series test, which is also directly related to the integral test for the convergence of infinite series, the sum from k is equal to 1 to infinity of 1 over k to the p converges for p greater than 1. So if, that is, if this is the case, then we can say that the domain of the Riemann zeta function is going to be equal to the interval from 1 to positive infinity, not including 1. Now, just a quick note, uh, consideration of x is equal to 1, 0, negative 1, and so on will be considered later. And you may be asking, well, if it's not defined at x is equal to 1, or x is equal to 0, or x is equal to negative 1, why would we even want to consider this at all? Of course, this is maybe not an intuitive thing to talk about now, uh, which is why we leave it until later uh, when we discuss different types of summation uh, methods. Uh, but for now, let's just accept uh, this to be valid. So for notation purposes, uh, we're going to be defining, uh, for example, uh, zeta of 2. So since 2 is bigger than 1, this number converges. So this number is going to be 1 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared plus and so on. Or you can say that Riemann zeta of 2 is going to be equal to 1 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 9 plus 1 over 16 plus 1 over 25 and so on. So it's pretty much the sum of the squared reciprocals of uh, positive integers. So one can verify that this is actually equal to pi squared divided by 6. Now we're not going to prove this in this video. We need a couple more extra tools to be able to verify this. Um, but this is referred to as Bessel's problem. Um, but we'll revisit this problem later uh, when we have a couple extra tools to actually verify it in a very simplistic manner. So another example would be, for example, a set of 3. So set of 3 is going to be the sum of reciprocal cubes. So 1 plus uh, 1 over 2 cubed plus 1 over 3 cubed. So 3 cubed would be 27. Plus 1 over 4 cubed, which is 64. Um, just kidding. Uh, so I'll just write it as 4 cubed plus 1 over 5 cubed uh, plus 1 over 6 cubed and so on. So this, um, for now, there has no been uh, been no closed form representation for zeta three like zeta two has. Um, so it's an open problem. So if you want to take this as a challenge to figure out a closed form representation of that, uh, that would be cool. But sometimes this is referred to as uh, 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 a Paye's constant, uh, uh, named after a French mathematician, I believe. A Paye's constant. So zeta 3 is a constant, zeta 2 is a constant, zeta 5 is a constant, and so on. So you definitely can find or evaluate uh, several different types of infinite series via the zeta function. We'll leave that for another video to discuss, you know, pretty much how to use this in practice for calculations. 
Um, so for the remaining of the video, we're going to try and connect the zeta function to other functions. Uh, for example, the gamma function, and maybe even have an integral representation developed uh, for the zeta function as well. Uh, so let's start off uh, by recalling what the gamma function is. So recall that gamma of x is defined to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 times e to the minus t dt. So we're going to try and build an identity uh, from this value uh, to develop an integral representation for uh, zeta. So I'm going to consider another integral that's extremely related to this. I'm going to represent it by star, and this is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 times e to the minus nt dt. And we're going to assume that n is a positive number. You can do natural numbers, real numbers, uh, uh, whatever you want, but let's at least assume that it is a positive number. So I'm going to try and represent this integral in terms of gamma. So uh, u substitution would definitely be the most obvious choice. So I'm going to let u be equal to n times t. So that means du is going to be equal to n times dt. That means dt is going to be equal to du divided by n. So if n is a positive number, the limits of integration 0 to infinity are going to be remaining fixed. Uh, and t is going to be replaced by u divided by n. So let's make that transformation for this integral here. So star is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of t, which is u divided by n, raised to the x minus 1, times e to the minus u, times du divided by n. So I'm going to do, distribute my power of x minus 1 to the top n and bottom, and I'm going to not forget my constant of n on the bottom and factor him out. So star is going to be equal to uh, the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the x minus 1 times e to the minus u, all divided by n to the x minus 1 times n. Now we have x minus 1 ends here and uh, 1 n there, so we have x ends on the bottom of this expression. And neither n nor x is dependent on u, so we can factor this entire thing out of the integral. So I can say that star is going to be equal to 1 divided by n to the power x times the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the x minus 1 times e to the minus u du. And of course we know what this is. This is precisely the definition of the gamma function. So therefore we can say that um, the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 times e to the minus nt dt is equal to 1 divided by nx times gamma x. So this is a very uh, useful identity. Now pretty much look at what we have here. This is pretty much like each of the terms of the Riemann zeta function. So I'm going to pretty much isolate this expression and I'm going to divide both sides of this expression by gamma of x. And I'm going to rewrite n as k instead. So that means uh, we have 1 divided by k to the power x is going to be equal to 1 over gamma of x times the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the power x minus 1 times e to the minus kt dt. And now I'm going to build my Riemann zeta function by summing both sides of this expression from k is equal to 1 to infinity. So once I do that, I get sum from k is equal to 1 to infinity of 1 divided by k to the x. So there's my Riemann zeta function. And this is going to be equal to what? So this is a summation over k. First term doesn't have any k's. The integral doesn't depend on k either. t to the x minus 1 doesn't depend on k. So this term here is the only term that we really care about. So this is going to be equal to 1 over gamma x times the integral from 0 to infinity times t to the x minus 1 times the sum from k is equal to 1 to infinity of e to the minus t to the power of k dt. Okay, cool. So t is our variable of integration, and t ranges from 0 to infinity. So since t belongs to the open interval 0 to infinity, e to the minus t always belongs to the interval 0, 1. 
So if this expression here to the power k is always bounded between 0 and 1, then this expression in this infinite series is simply a geometric series, which converges, so remember, that the sum from k is equal to 1 to infinity of r to the k is going to converge to r divided by 1 minus r, provided that r belongs to the interval uh, 0 to 1, or it's negative. So therefore, we can say that the sum from k is equal to 1 to infinity of 1 over k to the power x is going to be equal to 1 over gamma x times the integral from 0 to infinity t to the x minus 1 times, so we have e to the minus t, divided by 1 minus e to the minus t dt. So what do we have? Well, on the left-hand side, this is precisely the definition of the Riemann zeta function. So this is zeta of x is equal to 1 divided by gamma of x times the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 times, so what I can do is I can multiply both top and bottom of this expression by e to the t, um, so that's going to give me a better representation, namely 1 over e to the t minus 1 dt. So therefore we get the relationship that zeta of x is equal to 1 over gamma of x times the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 over e to the t minus 1 dt. So this is the integral representation for the Riemann zeta function. And you can very easily obtain another identity that relates zeta and gamma, namely the product of zeta x and gamma of x is just precisely equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 over e to the t minus 1 dt. So if you have this identity, then you can evaluate several different types of integrals. Uh, for example, if you want to find the integral from 0 to infinity of, I don't know, uh, let's do like t to the power of 4 divided by e to the t minus 1 dt, then of course 4 we know is going to be 5 minus 1, so 5 is the value of x in this expression. This is just going to be equal to zeta of 5 times gamma of 5. So that would be the closed form expression. Uh, as we know, gamma can be evaluated uh, at the positive integers uh, using factorial functions. And of course, zeta 5, uh, since it is an odd number, currently doesn't have a closed form. So that would be an acceptable answer for that particular integral. But again, there are lots of things that can be said about the Riemann zeta function. This video is just here to give an introduction uh, from the integral calculus perspective and how it connects to some other special functions, such as the gamma function.